In the last video, we talked about intervals and I proved um, an ordered field lemma for you. And if you haven't seen it, you should go back and check that out. In this video, I will be introducing to you one of the most important uh, the, the concept of real analysis, which is called, which, which, which is absolute, absolute values. So when I was taught this concept, especially in real analysis, I had great difficulty in understanding the purpose and the over, I, overall, I, I had a, a tough time understanding the concept of absolute values in real analysis, not in general, just in real analysis, because this, this topic plays a very critical role in real analysis. So before we move on, uh, you know, before we start doing a more real analysis-esque uh, examples, let me just give you the general definition of what an absolute value is. You probably most likely have seen this already. So we are normally just interested in the case where the, our, our ordered field is the reals. So in this, so for, for x, being an element of the of of this ordered field we define we define the absolute value of x so the absolute values are denoted by two long uh, the you know lines and it, only one of them just means such that however when you have two around a, a variable then both of them are given the name abs so absolute values so for x um, which is an element of the field, we define the absolute value of x as, so that's what the semicolon is for, as, so you have your absolute value. I'm going to use a piecewise function now. This, anytime you see this huge parentheses, this is called a piecewise, a piecewise function. Or, uh, normally, so the function would be this. So normally, you can think about it. This will be a piecewise definition. Definition. So basically, what this says is that if you give me an x, this this thing, this function, what will it do? Well, it it will keep it as x. It won't do anything to your input if x is greater than or equal to zero. Now. If you give me a negative value, if 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 you give me an x which is less than zero, then it will put a negative in front of it. So let me give you some examples. Let me give you some examples. Examples. So if I give, you know, if if I make my x equal to uh, I don't know five. Since it's it's greater than, we know that 5 is greater than, or, well, it's not equal to, we, we know it's greater than 0. Then, if you put this in the absolute value machine, it will take 5, and it will spit out 5. Another example will be, if I make my x negative 7, then clearly this is less than 0. Then, what will it do? When you put this inside of, of this absolute value a function, it will put a negative in front of your input. So two negatives make a positive. So this will be positive seven. And the last case is if you give me an x which is equal to zero, this is clearly equal to zero, uh, going by what I have been doing above, greater than zero, less than zero, or equal to zero, it will just basically take your input. So absolute value of zero, and it will keep it as as it is so you will have your zero so these will be the answers uh, of all your absolute value computations so more in relation to our course real analysis i told you that absolute values will play a big role in our course we can think of absolute values as you know distance from zero if i let me let me give you some intuition. If I was on a plane, if I, okay, so that's not straight. If I was on a, on a plane and, and, and I asked you, let me, let me have some sort of, some sort of point. Let me make it red. And I had this point. If it's at zero, then we say, well, the point is at zero. 
Now, if you have taken linear algebra, then you know that if you want the distance of two of of two, uh, you know, numbers. So let's say you want the distance from x to y. Sorry, to y. What you basically do is you take the absolute value of of x minus y. That's what you do. Though, so if I if I was here, if I was at seven, and if I was at nine, if I wanted the distance between. So that's what this thing is for. This is just to give you intuition. This is not real analysis. This is from linear algebra. So if you wanted the distance, so if you, so example, if you wanted the distance from seven to, to nine, then what you would do is you would say the absolute value of seven minus nine. Seven minus nine will be negative two. Now, since this is clearly less than zero, it will put a negative in front of your input. So it will be negative times negative two, which will be two. And that's what we care about. Distances, you can even think about it in your everyday life. When somebody asks you how far you are or how far they need to come, you won't tell them, well, come negative 1,354 kilometers due south. You will just tell them, well, come 1,500 kilometers this way. So distance, and distance even if you look at it from a physics point of view it does not have a it, it does not have a direction uh, it the the concept that has a direction we call that displacement so think about absolute values uh, as, as distances so what this thing was the distance between both of these points so Clearly, you the, you know it should be clear to you that the absolute values clearly. If I was to take some sort of variable and I was to subtract it, are are denoting some sort of uh, you know distance. So you can think about any given absolute values as distances from zero. Now, if I was to give you, if this is important, so if I was to give you some some value and let's call that x and i was to subtract it from c and i was to tell you that this will be less than this will be less than r then we are basically saying is that the distance between x and c will have to be less than r so you can even translate this in your head as the following you think to yourself you you in your head you say the distance from x to c will be less than will be less than r so so if you if you uh, wanted to think about this let's do a concrete example let me give you some sort of x let me make this three, three, and let's let's make this seven. Now, if if I was to if I was to um, you know draw some sort of some sort of uh, you know line, and I was to tell you draw what what you see here. So how would you do this? So one shortcut that it's it's very helpful is that you know you think about this you think about the distance as as what you want it to be uh, you know you think about it as a as a radius you think about this as your main point as your main point okay and you want to add and subtract this from this so so uh, the easiest shortcut for this is you take the second number that you are subtracting, so minus c, and you don't you ignore the c, you add and subtract this to you know compute an interval. So x minus c will be less than r in what? It will be less than r in the following situations, in the following interval. So you put yourself as c minus r and going all the way to, to c plus r. So why am I not using square brackets? Because we don't have an equal sign here. This is a shortcut in order to understand this. So in the problem that we were originally doing, how you want to think about this is the, the solution, the solution to this problem that may be, you know, uh, you know, might be causing difficulties for you. The solution for this will be an interval. Y you want to add 
sorry, you want to subtract three and, 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 and seven. So you want to have three minus seven and you want to go and, and you want to go to three plus seven. This is the formula that you want to use in order to solve these sort of issues, these sort of problems. So what will this be? So three minus, uh, so where's my weight? So three minus seven will be what? Negative four and three plus seven will be 11. Let's look at this. Let's put negative, let's put negative four here and let's put 11, 11 here. Now, if you give me any X, so let's, let's, make three the center here you give me any x and the distance will be less than seven so how, how how do we know this if three is the center remember how i told you to think about this as your center if three is the center and everything around it has to be less than seven then you can give me any you, you can give me any x here so let's 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 use uh, let's use one Let's, let's use one. So let's try out one. So one minus three is what? One minus three is negative two. We know that, that if, the, if, if the input is negative, the absolute value function will put a negative in front of it. So this will be two. So the distance between one and three will be two, which is clearly, we, we, we know that two is clearly less than less than seven. So this interval just defines the following, the following uh, thing. So you can give me any x uh, as long as it's, as long as it's in. Well, it's sorry. As long as uh, your given x is in between this interval and is not equaling these numbers, and that's why I have input the the square brackets. As long as it's between both negative four and 11, it will be your your solution will be less than seven. And this is the solution for x. And how do we denote it? We say that x is an element of of negative four going all the way to 11 without including the endpoint. And this will be your answer. So to repeat myself, if if you are given this, this format, so if you are given some absolute value and you're told to subtract two numbers that the second number that you are subtracting will be the center this is the center and the thing that's being said that well you have to be uh, this whole thing has to be less than or uh, sorry not equal to just less than that number that's your radius think about this as a circle think about this as as a circle that's your radius if three that's why I used those letters. C is for center. This is your center. So think about this as your center and think about everything outside of it as your radius. This will be what? Seven and this will be seven. And the only way that, you know, the distance between the center will be less than the radius is if you are the center plus center plus are away to the right and center minus uh, radius to the left. I hope I'm making sense because if if somebody was to just tune in at this second, they would probably not understand what I'm trying to say. So think of this as your center and that's what, what I'm trying to tell you here is that you think about this as your center and then if you want the distances to be, you know, the distance between some, some x, some x and the center to be less than the radius, then of course you need to have some sort of interval notation answer because you are given some sort of, you're giving some sort of domain as your, as your answer. And this will be your answer. What, what you do is you look at the center and you subtract the radius, so the, 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 the thing that you're told to be, you know, less than two, you, you do C minus R, and of course you don't include the endpoints on both sides, and you put a comma, you go all the way to the center plus the radius, so C plus R. So uh, if you're given this sort of problem, let's do one more just to nail this, nail, nail this whole thing in. So let's do, let's do, 
Let's do the following example. Let me give you x minus 7, uh, 17, which will be less than uh, 22. So think about this as your C. Think about this as your center. Think about this as your radius. So in your in in your number line, put this in your center. Put 17 right in the middle. And and then you say to yourself, well, if the radius will be 22, if the radius is 22, think about this as a circle. Think about this as a circle. If if you have some sort of radius, then from the center and 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 if the radius is 22, this has to be this has to be 22 and this has to be 22. So to get to this point, to get to this point, the only way that you could you know get there is if you do 17 minus 22. And the only way that you could get at that point is if you do 17 plus 20, 22. So you say that 17 minus 22 will be negative 5, will be negative 5. And over here you say 17 plus 22 will be, so 22 plus 10 is 32, and 32 plus 7 will be 39. So your x, the x satisfying this will be what? x will be an element which resides within the interval, the open interval, going from negative 5 to 39 and that will be your answer for this problem you always wanna you you, you always want to create a circle for these sort of uh, problems I hope this video cleared this topic up for you and hopefully you know how to solve these now